Um, many thanks uh, for inviting us for this presentation. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I thought that yesterday and the discussions were super uh, inspiring um, and to see the different views. Um, and today we would like to kick off this uh, session uh, today by talking about uh, how to evaluate design science and entrepreneurship uh, and, and uh, this is really work in, uh, in progress and uh, we've been thinking about some guiding principles which could be helpful in evaluating design science uh, and entrepreneurship and uh, uh, this is uh, thinking together with René Mauer and uh, Jan van Brocke uh, and this has been a fantastic project uh, so far. Let me frame this a bit um, to, to kind of uh, position a bit from where we're coming here. And now we, like uh, many of you, are great uh, enthusiasts about uh, the design science approach. And we think that it's, um, it's kind of nicely counterbalancing the mostly explanatory uh, research that we're doing in entrepreneurship with uh, taking a perspective uh, on thinking of how things should be and maybe supporting entrepreneurs and uh, people within the entrepreneur ecosystem uh, uh, to how to act. Uh, and we think uh, this is meaningful. We think we need uh, more good entrepreneurship. Uh, there are a lot of challenges, not only through COVID-19, uh, and we, <laughs> we need to tackle them. And as uh, scholars, I think we, uh, we can uh, help that with uh, design science approach. So you see uh, from this side here of the Zoom, there's uh, quite some idealism uh, and quite some passion about the design science approach. Uh, but there is, of course, also a challenge. Uh, not with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here is the challenge. <laughs> uh, uh, the challenge is a review too, or some, uh, um, which is kind of an example of uh, uh, some of the skepticism that we sometimes see um, or hear when we talk <coughs> to people who are not so familiar with the design science approach. Uh, so, from, uh, so what we uh, sometimes hear is that uh, people are asking, okay, Christopher, it's very nice uh, that you're talking about design science, but is this really scientific? Is this uh, something that we should do or is this something uh, just from the domain of practice? Um, and should you touch that or should you not? Uh, and this is one question which we often uh, hear actually. And the second one is a question of, you now when we're looking at these design science studies, how do we actually evaluate them? So they are different, they have a different look, different feel. Uh, how do we evaluate them when reviewing papers? So this is uh, kind of the starting point for uh, um, wh where we're coming from. Uh, and in this short presentation, we would like to uh, kind of describe um, wh why we think that design science is actually a scientific approach. Um, uh, and uh, outline a specific uh, design science perspective. And based on that, we would like to um, describe four guidelines, which we hope uh, are of any help for, for, for reviewing uh, design science uh, papers. So let us start um, by uh, briefly outlining how we look in this paper on design science. Now, this is um, a specific way of looking at design science uh, and differs a bit from the perspectives which have been outlined yesterday. So I briefly want to uh, describe it. So we draw in this paper much on the thinking from Mary Bunge. Uh, Mary Bunge is a fantastic philosopher, uh, my personal hero, uh, and he has been writing about the philosophy of technology quite a bit. And this is how we look at, um, at design science in entrepreneurship. Now, looking through Bunge at entrepreneurship, um, we can kind of distinguish three approaches to entrepreneurship. This is entrepreneurship as science, entrepreneurship as design science, and then entrepreneurship as practice. Now, uh, I, I just want to re briefly run you a bit through these uh, three approaches to show how we think entrepreneurship as design science is distinct, but also related to the two different approaches. So let us start by uh, talking about entrepreneurship as, as science and how Bunge would uh, kind of uh, uh, look at that. Um, so uh, in entrepreneurship as science is kind of the mainstream paradigm uh, in entrepreneurship currently. And then we're asking uh, typical questions like why, how, what, who, some things like that. Uh, so I've brought an example question here, uh, which is why is personal initiative 
related to entrepreneurial performance. It's a question that uh, some of my psychology colleagues are wrestling with uh, uh, for the last 20 years. Now, um, entrepreneurship as science can be characterized by three things. So the first thing is um, the ultimate value for evaluating uh, entrepreneurship as science is whether the claims that we make are true. The knowledge that we are uh, generating in entrepreneurship as science from a Bungo perspective is explanatory knowledge. This is what uh, Henrik has been referring to also uh, by descriptive knowledge. And this is kind of the cause effect logic. Now, uh, what makes uh, entrepreneurship as science actually scientific is uh, the use of scientific uh, the scientific method to, uh, according to Bungo. Uh, and uh, in, in uh, shorthand, the scientific method is that you pose a problem against a scientific body of knowledge, use some kind of uh, scientific methods, uh, and uh, the results that you're getting, you're checking against this body of knowledge again. So this kind of, uh, 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 I mean, yes, you've been uh, talking about it for quite some while, but this <laughs> kind of a summary of how the scientific method, according to him, could be sketched. Uh, now, against this backdrop, uh, we think about entrepreneurship as design science like that. So uh, for us, entrepreneurship as design science is not tackling why or how questions, but actually how to questions. So uh, an example question would be how to design a personal initiative training. And I've chosen this uh, question here because this uh, has been uh, the question for a fantastic design science study, which has been recently published in science. Uh, which I will refer continuously uh, throughout this presentation to. Uh, uh, and this is kind of a, a very nice uh, uh, study to that. So the value for evaluating entrepreneurship as design science is a bit different than entrepreneurship as science, according to Bongo, because it's evaluated essentially according to its usefulness. The type of knowledge is also a bit different. Uh, we are not uh, uh, developing explanatory knowledge here, but design knowledge, which is prescriptive knowledge instead of descriptive knowledge. Some talk about, Everett talks about um, tele teleological uh, knowledge. So we're talking about some kind of means to achieve an end, so desired outcome. Uh, according to Bungman, this is also a scientific approach because it also uses the scientific method um, in which uh, we pose a question against the body of design knowledge and then use some kind of methods which we all agreed upon. So that's kind of uh, how he views it. Now, how is this different from practice? Now, um, entrepreneurship as practice also shares the value of usefulness, but it's different in, the, in that the knowledge um, uh, that uh, practice is generating is a bit different. So Bunga describes this as uh, idiosyncratic knowledge. So basically uh, experienced entrepreneurs or uh, entrepreneurs through their experience and intuition uh, develop some kind of knowledge. And that's what we see in Berlin uh, quite frequently. And we also invite them to UCP. Uh, it, it's the uh, entrepreneurs who have built a, a startup and now spread some wisdom uh, to the next generation. So this is like, uh, um, in essence, uh, entrepreneurship as a craftsmanship. So they're generating useful knowledge, but it's not necessarily scientific knowledge. Now, how are the three uh, fields related? Uh, entrepreneurship as design science draws on the explanatory knowledge, and it provides some kind of new cognitive understanding problems to this, uh, entrepreneurship as design uh, science. Uh, and it uh, contributes to practice by sharing design knowledge, so guiding actions of entrepreneurs and uh, entrepreneurship educators. And in turn, it receives a wonderful gift, which is practical problems which design scientists can wrestle with. So this is kind of uh, how uh, we, in this paper, look at, uh, at design science. Now, let me uh, briefly outline uh, four principles that, uh, that we derive based on, on this view on design science. The first one is, that um, the problem that we are posing in design science should be posed against a body of design knowledge. So uh, how do we conceptualize design knowledge? I've just um, already mentioned that we conceptualize it as uh, teleological uh, knowledge. So we are thinking about design knowledge as the, uh, at the intersection between a problem and a solution. 
So how to train people in order to be more entrepreneurial. And there are actually, um, how we think about it, there are two types of design knowledge that we can contribute to and that we can pose our questions against. These are, uh, and uh, here we uh, put them as design principles, which is this knowledge of do a personal initiative training to uh, achieve some entrepreneurial performance results. Uh, and then the second one, uh, and this is something that Pascal and uh, in the discussion with Pascal has been popping up quite a bit, uh, is the question of um, assessing the quality of these suggestions. So here the question is, should we actually do a personal initiative training uh, for people uh, for entrepreneurs in Western Africa? Uh, and this is not only a question of effectiveness and efficiency. So, for example, in the campus paper, we have a super effective and very efficient training. But the question whether Western scholars should somehow uh, uh, play with the mindset of uh, entrepreneurs in Western Africa is a question of social value. Uh, and this is kind of the second body of knowledge that we consider to be de design knowledge. So bottom line here, uh, the, the design science problem should be posed against this body of knowledge and should be very specific about it. So the question is, which discourse in the design knowledge um, uh, sphere we're joining? Now, um, uh, the second guideline which we would like to propose is that uh, the design science project uh, should be clearly positioned. So thinking about design knowledge as to be kind of at the intersection of problems or ends and means, we can differentiate four different uh, types of design science research. And this draws really a lot on, on the writing by Gregor and Hefner. So let me explain that a bit. Um, so if we have a means and relationship which we already know about. So for example, to do a training to achieve some entrepreneurial results, then it's likely that we're going to uh, an evaluation design science research study. So we, we, are, um, we are checking whether the design knowledge is actually true and whether it's effective. Now, a second type of design science project which we could think of is adaptation, or we would call it adaptation. So here the problem can be rather clearly posed. So the desired outcome is kind of known, but the means are not known. So for example, uh, when we think about um, how we as a firm could become more entrepreneurial, then we have a rather clear goal, but we don't necessarily know the means about uh, uh, how to achieve that. Kind of uh, going along with the adaptation um, um, uh, design science type, we have an acceptation design science project, uh, which is, uh, and uh, Roberto was talking yesterday about messenger RNA and how this technology is now used to tackle novel problems. Uh, and this is what we uh, consider acceptation problems. Now, last but not least, exploration problems are when we're exploring both the, uh, the problem space and the solution space to find novel means and relationships. So this is kind of uh, the four different types of design science uh, research projects, which, which we kind of um, build a typology here for, uh, and which we think should be clearly posed. Now, a third guiding principle uh, refers to the method that we use uh, to kind of explore the problem that we're posing. Uh, and here we're referring to, uh, to the debate which is happening uh, quite a bit in the information systems field. And they are, um, they are talking, they, they, they are asking the question whether design science is actually a purely analytical approach sometimes, or whether it's more creative. Uh, and here we, would, uh, we suggest that it's actually uh, really depending on the t uh, type of design science that we're doing. So if we have an evaluation problem, like uh, the one which is um, tackled by Campos in the science article, we just need a very rigid analytical approach of checking that. So that there's little creativity uh, in running a, a field experiment. This is slightly different when we have adaptation problems. So in this case, we are um, analytically uh, deriving some, some causes for a problem that is occurring. And then we're trying to find novel solutions for that 
problem. So, so if we want to become more entrepreneurial as an organization, uh, then we, we are uh, first analyzing why, why are we actually not so entrepreneurial and then we're coming up with uh, novel solutions uh, and this um, this uh, this requires some kind of creativity and uh, design so there's some more creativity uh, needed so we uh, we suggest that actually um, whether we use analytical methods or more, more creative methods really depends on the problem in both cases, it should be rigorously done. And Jan has some fantastic ideas also about how to rigorously do a creative uh, 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 thinking. Uh, and I'm sure you can talk about it uh, in the discussion here. Uh, last but not least, uh, we think that design science research should be very uh, explicit about the con uh, contributions that it makes. Uh, and here we, uh, again, have a little matrix uh, we have been talking about uh, how design knowledge can be split into design principles and design evaluation knowledge. And we think that there is actually the possibility to contribute both theoretically and empirically to both of these types of knowledges. So if we are coming up with novel design principles, then we're uh, theoretically contributing to design knowledge to the design principles, or if we improve related design principles, but we can also empirically contribute to this knowledge by testing design principles or by de uh, describing artifacts. So this may be Cathy's uh, uh, approach of uh, uh, building a design knowledge from case studies. So when we're describing some kind of artifacts and then we're theorizing about whether this, uh, why it's working, how it's working. The same thing is true for uh, design evaluation. So here we also suggest that we can contribute both theoretically and empirically. Uh, theoretically by, uh, for example, developing novel criteria and norms against which we check uh, design knowledge or design principles really. And uh, empirically we can explore and uh, validate some, for example, design requirements. I just want to check so Christoph sure. that this is your last uh, slide, right? This is my last set. Excellent. Sorry, I was running a bit out of time. So, uh, so, so the question is, so what? Uh, so we have been starting by the question of uh, whether uh, we actually think that it's a scientific approach. Yes, we uh, we do think so. Um, we, we we have been trying the you know, uh, Bunge uh, and argued for that. Uh, and then we think that so there are four main guiding principles which uh, could be considered for evaluating design research. And this is pose a problem against design knowledge. Um, and then be clear about the problem that you're tackling, use rigorous methods. And then the fourth one is to be very explicit about the theoretical or empirical contributions that you can make with that. And with that, uh, many thanks, Henrik, for running, letting me run a bit over time. Uh, now we are very happy to discuss uh, these uh, first ideas on uh, the, how to evaluate design science and entrepreneurship. Many thanks. Thank you. Uh, this was uh, this was a nice and and, and really well structured presentation, I think. Uh, so let me see here. We have a few things in chat already. You can you can fill out with additional questions if you if you want to. Um, I think uh, Edwin actually had a question that I think is is relevant here. You want to ask it out loud? Uh, yes. Uh... I think I, I it it was answered in the last uh, slides, but I can I make again because in the first uh, thing uh, is the entrepreneur, entrepreneurship as a as a science as a design science and, and a practice, and when you have this uh, when artifact creations, you uh, one in uh, in a case what is familiar to me is what the entrepreneur when uh, is making a, a, a entrepreneurship, they make a, a get some patterns from what it's doing and then they come with an artifact. And in this thing, it is uh, it's, it's like the creation of the artifact, a part of a pra practice of the entrepreneurship, but it's also kind of a design science in some. And how do you match this, this phenomena in, in your yeah, very nice. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for the question, Edwin. 
Um, so here, uh, so the question is how practice and uh, design science is really related and how it's different, right? Uh, and uh, so we can easily think about uh, how entrepreneurs create some artifacts or some design knowledge. And the difference that we do here is that we say, okay, look, uh, not every practical problem or every practical artifact is actually proper, a proper design problem or design uh, artifact. So, if, uh, for example, um, George Romo and uh, Madis Talma, they have been uh, thinking about an artifact to create an ecosystem strategy. Um, so this is kind of uh, what we would consider a design science knowledge or design knowledge. Um, and uh, so any given entrepreneur could ask himself, how do I really, you know, come up with a strategy, which could be a problem for them. And then they could up, uh, come up with some kind of ideas about that. Um, but this is not necessarily this practice problem. It's not necessarily a problem for science anymore, or design science, because Madis has already been tackling that. So this is kind of uh, how we uh, differentiate these two a bit. May I add to this, Christoph? Um, yes, I, 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 I like to think of it on, on at least two layers. Uh, I see there is the design processing, and then there's the design theorizing, yeah, to put it uh, in my simple words. On the one hand, we, we solve problems through solutions uh, and different types of solutions are coming out of this. There might be models, there might be methods, there might be you know, business model, whatever, things coming out. So that is kind of a, a design process. And then it's the reflection uh, of one or multiple design processes trying to generate knowledge uh, on more abstract level on design processes, right? Uh, this discussion has been going on that uh, I'm, I'm not an entrepreneurship um, scholar, I'm information systems, but it had been going on in information systems research a lot. Uh, and, and it seems to, at, in, at least in our community, that this is kind of is consensus <laughs> uh, that uh, in the way that the running through the process and designing solutions to problems is kind of what you could in conventional research compared to data collection. It's kind of your strategy of inquiry is building stuff and evaluating it and trying to see what's coming out. And then, however, uh, that would be kind of corresponding to a results section in the paper. But then you have a discussion section, right, in which you would try to reflect on this, engage with existing theory, engage with existing uh, solutions and try to ad advance our theoretical understanding. Yeah, thanks, Jan. Uh, of course, uh, Jan and René are, you know, we're welcome to jump into this discussion and, uh, and support Christoph. Um, uh, I think Orestes, your question is kind of related to this. Do you want to, um, do you want to ask? Yes, it? yes, thank you. <clears throat> Christoph, we've been discussing about these topics quite a lot and I think we converge in many things. It's, I mean, the three aspects that you were showing um, can be, I, I gave an example basically in the, in the G forum last year where I said, well, you have the physiologist, which is the scientist in a way, the natural scientist, you have the clinical practitioner who is the design scientist, and you have the practitioner, you, the, the medical doctor in, in, uh, in practice. And that's, I think, a very good analogy, which you can see here. So, and the interesting thing is that, that there is indeed this third role in, in medical research. I mean, in the United States, there's a difference between uh, an MD and a PhD in medicine. That's two different things. And that quite well illustrates this very particular thing. Um, I would like to stress two more aspects that, that have crossed my mind when I was thinking about all these things. One is that I think all these things have to do also a lot with abduction. So with purse basically. Uh, in a very simplified manner, you can say we have these three things cause, effect, and laws, right? And then you can say inductive thinking is you have a cause, you measure the effect, you find a law. Deductive thinking is you know the law, you give a cause, and you find the effect. And now you've got the third pairing, which is you know, in a way, the law. You want to have an effect. Now you look for the right cause. And I think that's exactly what you do in design science. You somehow, and, and this is also what makes it scientific, you, you build on a knowledge base 
you know, like the medical researcher who will build on the knowledge base of DNA and mRNA and all these kind of natural science kind of things, and then try to um, purposefully construct something that is related to a human purpose. You very rightfully stated that, but he doesn't do it just, you know, out of out of the blue in a way, but I, I think it was von Aiken that used the term grounded, you know, field tested and grounded. This is what he said is design science. And I think that is um, that is a very profound thing. So that's something um, one, one should look at. And then maybe as a last comment, I think there are two levels of artifacts that, are, that we need to distinguish. And let me make it in a very simple metaphor. If you talk about uh, construction engineering, civil engineering, you have the building, okay, that's one thing. But then you do have the scaffolds, you know, the, the aids that you create in order to build the building. And I think that's really two very different levels. And I think what we do very often as entrepreneurship researchers, if we do design, design science in entrepreneurship research, we create our main artifacts are the scaffolds. While it is the entrepreneurs that using these scaffolds build the buildings. And what I observe in the discussion about um, uh, design science and entrepreneurship is that sometimes we confuse these two levels. And both are design processes, but they're different. Yeah? I think one is the role that we have as design scientists in entrepreneurship. We create the scaffolds, we create the methods, we create the approaches, the frameworks, whatever you want to have. And then there is the entrepreneurs that using these scaffolds, using these frameworks, I think Roberto said it yesterday, implicitly, I think he meant exactly that thing. He said, yeah. it's the design of the framework, which matters for us, while it's the design of the building of the company of the business that matters for the entrepreneurs. Couldn't agree it's, more. Um, that is, it's also we, we we also refer to this as a class of problem and, and an instantiation yeah. of a problem, and usually uh, we are always looking into classes of problems and classes of solutions, and yeah. uh, and and that is these days now in information systems we would talk about even more generally talk about design knowledge, right? It can be it yeah. is well, we are creating we're advancing design knowledge, but we're not only doing the instances as the as the houses. I, I couldn't agree yeah. more. But then if I may add also one thing, which is I find particularly fascinating at the moment, and it might relate to entrepreneurship also, is that for a very long time in information systems at least, it was very much really also this groundedness, right? To say like, I can, I, I, I would remember good colleagues of mine saying, artifacts are not invented, they are crafted, right? So that it is really derived from knowledge and, you know? However, now I, I more and more come to thinking why, do we need to, to ground them so much, right, upfront? Or why do yeah. we need to ground them upfront? Can, can we not also be, and that's what kind of principle three was here, be more innovative, right? And, 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 right. and then ground them ex post, right? And right. there will be a certain level of evidence, but we don't need to, because we also need kind of the innovative bit there, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and maybe the only thing is that, I mean, I would never use the word derive if yeah. you, because it's yeah. too epistemologically loaded. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not about any, it's just that, I would put it that way, that the scientific knowledge is just as legitimate as mm -hmm. the practitioner knowledge and the context knowledge, and then anything goes. I think then it's really exactly what you say, then it's up to creativity, and it's just the ex post yeah. that you need to bring it back into the realm of, of validity and, and these yeah, kinds right. of categories. Yeah. Some level of evidence in a way, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but there are different sources to this evidence. I, I don't find the extra moment. And they, may, and they may be crazy. I mean, science yeah, is sure. one legitimate, but there may be crazy sources. Sure. And I fully agree. We should be yeah. open to this. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is the beginning of a beautiful conversation. But uh, <laughs> I, I want to have one more question before we <laughs> before we switch over. So, uh, Fritjof, you had a reflection on the the currency and relevance of uh, Bunge. 
Yeah, and it's actually fun. I see right behind you, uh, Joas is the creativity of action. And I think that's actually, in a way, what I'm referring to. Can you maybe go back to the slide with the framework of Boomer that you, that you opened up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to understand, so maybe for some context, so I'm, I'm both in organization theory, but also in design studies. And um, what I often miss in organization studies, like also, for example, entrepreneurship around design is that there's like this uh, almost exclusive look on design as design science. Well, if you look at design studies, we have moved quite, quite further than, than just looking at design science. So one example would be design uh, uh, inquiry and the work on, on reflective practice by, by Donald Schoen. And so one example would be, what, I, I don't understand why you are using this framework when especially the notion of entrepreneurship as practice has moved quite a lot, I think, from, from what you described here. I think uh, uh, the people that, that give themselves the label, they, they would have a very different idea of what practice is here. But the same that's also- a, with, a, That's yeah? a good question. Can we have a chance Sorry. to answer it before we run out of time Sorry. as well? Yes. That's fine. Uh, uh, so um, to uh, answer this question, so um, maybe starting with the last one. So uh, I see, and I wasn't aware of that, uh, that of course the entrepreneurship as practice kind of uh, label evokes some kind of uh, uh, relationships to the strategy as practice or uh, other as practice uh, kind of uh, um, lines of inquiry. Uh, and in, in, indeed here, this is different. Uh, so this is, uh, um, we're not referring to practice theory here. This is just a way of differentiating um, uh, design science from more practical uh, entrepreneurship um, as we see it. Uh, uh, could you post the first question again? Because I'm not uh, sure what um, I think what I'm trying to, sorry for being then so convoluted. Um, what I'm trying to ask is why would you exclude insights from design studies about design by looking at design only as design science and not including other ways of engaging with design? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to uh, in, include them also. Uh, and I'm not aware of them uh, uh, so much. Uh, so what, what we uh, try to do here uh, is to be um, to we uh, to have a, a clear positioning of how we see or how we in this paper look as uh, uh, at entrepreneurship as design science and it would actually be very interesting uh, to have conversations of how design community has moved on. Uh, this is uh, just our way of, you know, kind of positioning uh, ourselves in a way that uh, um, is uh, grounded to develop uh, some some guiding principles. So this is uh, kind of the, the reasoning behind that. I think this, uh, this uh, in a sense, relates back to some of the discussions we had yesterday as well. I'm not sure if you were with us then, Fritjof, uh, but uh, Roberto and a few others also talked about how, you know, the Simon tradition is not the only tradition to conceptualize and think about design. But I think um, yeah, yeah, just Christoph and, and Jan and René, uh, when you write a paper like this, you don't need to include all perspectives of design. Publish it and let Fritjof write a rebuttal and, you know, then we'll get going. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you, Christoph and uh, Dimo. Uh, I'll make you co-host. And, and what was can that? I uh, ask, uh, uh, this is a... Just sure, a while Dimo posts his post. It's a request it's, uh, from people who are more versed in design science to maybe send us a bibliography of what do you think people in entrepreneurship should be reading on design. So this is just a request to people from design studies. If you can give us like a small bibliography or your favorite three papers or whatever. 